This video is a review on approximation methods in quantum mechanics. So when we can't solve the Schrodinger equation exactly for a wave function, we need to find some method to approximate that. And the two main methods that we're talking about are variational methods and perturbational methods. So we have uh, an exact wave function here, psi naught, and we have some approximate wave function phi, which is possibly not equal to this exact wave function. The energy for this approximate wave function will be the standard expectation value for the Hamiltonian, the integral of psi star Hamiltonian acting on psi over the entire domain of the wave function. And then if this wave function isn't normalized, we have the denominator which normalizes it through the integral of psi star psi. And through the variational theorem, we know that the energy of any approximate wave function, which we could say depends on some parameter lambda, is greater than or equal to the true ground state energy for this system. Note that this applies to ground states or the lowest energy solution only. So what this means is, as we have the energy for some approximate wave function, as it gets lower and lower, that means we're getting a better and better approximate wave function getting closer and closer to the exact wave function. Or at least this is true if we're using variational methods. So what we do in this case is make our wave function depend on some parameter, which we might call lambda here, then calculate our expectation value of the energy, differentiate with respect to the value of that parameter, and set that equal to zero, and then hopefully you have a minimum with respect to the value of that parameter in your energy, and thus you have the best possible wave function within that functional form. Additionally, we have the linear variational method, where our variational parameters are coefficients in a linear combination of basis functions. So our wave function, our approximate wave function, is represented as a sum of a coefficient times some basis function and then summed over all of the basis functions that we have. So there are some matrices that arrive when, arise when uh, developing the formulas for how you go about determining the minimum energy parameter set at the point at which the energy uh, derivative with respect to every single parameter is zero. You have these matrix elements in the Hamiltonian matrix where you have the integral of basis function I star times the Hamiltonian acting on basis function J and you have the overlap integrals of the overlap matrix Sij the integral of basis function I star times basis function J over the entire domain of the wave function. And when you derive what is the minimum set of parameters, you get that the Hamiltonian matrix acting on a coefficient vector, so the set of all these Cn for n basis functions, equals the energy times the overlap matrix times the same coefficient vector. And this is actually the Schrodinger equation expressed in matrix form. And this has its solution for the lowest energy coefficient vector and for the energies when the determinant of the Hamiltonian matrix minus the energy times the overlap matrix equals zero. And we show some examples to make that uh, much more concrete about what that actually entails uh, in terms of an actual example. Then in terms of perturbative methods, we have perturb perturbation theory here. And that is that we have some total Hamiltonian H which is partitioned into a reference Hamiltonian, H0 or H0, plus a perturbation which deviates from this reference system. So this reference system is chosen such that you have an exact solution to the Hamiltonian, uh, to the Schrodinger equation for it, that H0 psi0 equals E0 psi0. So you have the energy and the wave function partitioned in these levels where you start with the zero order energy E0 and the zero order wave function psi0. And what we do is we add in this perturbation and add in successive corrections to both the energy and the wave function if desired. So the energy can be expressed in terms of the sum of a zero order plus first order plus second order contribution, etc., all the way up to the nth order if you want. And similarly, the wave function can have successive corrections onto the first order wave function. And in the process of deriving what these energies are equal to, we have, of course, from this equation here, that the zero order energy is just the expectation value of the reference Hamiltonian acting on whatever uh, wave function we have. Then the first order energy, uh, we derive that that is the integral of uh, basis function n here uh, times the perturbation acting on that 
that state there. So the expectation value of the perturbation acting on the reference wave function gives us the first order energy. And then successive energy corrections get more and more complicated beyond that. And then just to show that even for the first order wave function, there is uh, some numerical heavy lifting involved. Uh, we would have a sum over all of the uh, eigenfunctions of the reference Hamiltonian of this uh, integral of the perturbation and then a denominator, which depends on the differences of energy levels. And these all form a coefficient for each of the individual eigenstates of the reference system. So the first, the zero and first order energy actually come out to be rather straightforward uh, expressions here. And then the first order wave function, a little bit more work involved, and then subsequent orders for both energy and the wave function uh, become much more involved as you go.